Okay, welcome to part one of this video series even. Um, in this video, we're basically going to be creating the database and talking about the file structure. Um, depending on how long this takes, we might move on to the sort of some of the back-end files as well. I'd like to create the init file at the very least. So we'll start with the um, folder file structure. This is the root of the system that we're going to be working with. If I just open up my browser, um, just go back out of this file. You see these three are going to be pages. Send mail is as I described before basically. Send mail sends mail to all users. Sign up allows the user to subscribe to your mailing list and unsubscribe allows them to um, remove their email address. Um, and that will be accessed via a link at the bottom of the page, bottom of the email, sorry. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much how that's going to work. Um, this folder structure is basically the same as the one I always use. Um, these three files here, uh, basically these three files here, these represent pages, and then in this core folder you have sort of any back-end type stuff. So this init file, for example, is included in by all the pages. It will open the database connection and include any other files that are needed. So in this case, it includes the uh, mail.inc file in this inc folder. Um, so all of that will be included in all of your pages. So that's going to be like a back-end only sort of library to provide some functions. So uh, what, we've, what we're going to code first is the sign-up page. Um, what that will do is insert um, a row basically into the database. So obviously first we need to create the database, so I'm just going to open up a PHP my admin. I've already created a, a database um, with no tables, and I'm just going to create a new table on it now. I'm going to call it users, um, users A, users. Uh, it's going to have four fields. Hit go, or enter. And the first field is going to be the user ID. The second field is going to be the, their first name. So we're going to spell it right first name. The final field is going to be the last name and the not final field, sorry, the sec uh, third field. The final field, this one, is going to be the email. Um, I'm going to set the length, oh well, the type is going to be int for user ID. I'm going to set the length to 8 just because um, you're not very likely to have any more users than that and if you do you can always raise it later on. Um, I'm going to set the type of first name to a varchar of length 24 and the same for last name, so let's just do that. Um, email also needs to be a varchar, but it needs to be a lot longer. I'm going to go for 128 characters. The reason for this is that I think the technical limit for an email address is 320 characters. So we need to sort of account for people having very long email addresses. Um, I've s some videos I've seen set this limit to something like 30, which is obviously far too short. I've got an email address which is longer than that. It's you know it's too short. <laughs> You're not going to use 128 uh, bytes for each row, um, that's the var part of varchar, it's variable length, or variable, anyway. Um, it will only use as much space in the actual database as the number of characters you have, so you won't waste any space by using, like, saying this very high. Um, you do lose a bit of efficiency when searching and, sort of com you know, comparing on this field, but we won't worry about that too much. The last thing we need to do is just scroll across, uh, set AI and primary index for the um, user ID. You know, it's just sort of standard way of doing it. So we're going to hit save. That will create this new table. Um, we need to create a new index now. Um, we can create a unique index which will force the email address to be unique because obviously we don't want people to sign up with the same email address more than once. So we're just going to create an index on one column. Click go. Uh, I'm just going to use the name unique. I always do that. I don't really know why. Uh, the field is going to be email, the size is going to leave blank, I'm just going to hit save. And that's that done, you see, uh, oh, it's called a domain, why have I done that? I'm just going to rename this now to unique, that's what I meant to use. So, just hit save again, and now we have this unique index. Um, it tells you that it's a unique index somewhere, it tells you the field as well. Oh yeah, there, unique, yes. So that basically this will force the... You, um, Let's do it. will force the uh, email column to only have unique values. So basically, it'll st it won't allow you to insert a row containing an email address that is already in the table. Okay, so um, what we need to do now is sort of connect to this database. So I'm just going to open up the sign up page because that's the page we're going to be creating first. 
and then go to our code and go to the init file which is what we're going to do first init file uh, should be a concept you're getting familiar with now at least uh, I use it in pretty much all of my videos um, first thing it does is connect to the database using the mysql connect function which takes three parameters they're all strings the first one is the address of the server you want to connect to in my case it's the same as the web server I'm running so 127001 and the username is the next parameter which I have set as example user and then the password for that user which I have set as example pass and um, next thing after that is to tell the MySQL server which database we want to work with, which we do using the MySQL select DB function. It takes one parameter, um, which is the database name, which if you recall from PHP MyAdmin was mailing list, I think. Okay, so that's the uh, database connection set up. What we want to do next is um, sort of include any backend files that we might need, what well, we do need. Um, so what we're going to do is first get the full server path um, to the folder, to this core folder. And we can do that using the dir name, this folder is the path that we're getting for. Wait, let me say that again. This is the folder that we're getting the path for, core folder. Um, we can do that using the dir name function, dir name, on the file constant. I've explained this before, so I won't go into too much detail in, uh, in on mm, over it, relating to it. I'm not sure how you say that, anyway. Uh, so what we're going to do is just define this path variable as dir name of something and this something is going to be underscore underscore file underscore underscore double underscore at either end of that file um, and what that file constant does is always sort of it's the full server path to the current um, to the current script um, regardless if it's being included or anything like there is also the dollar underscore underscore server array script name key um, and that points to this sort of f file name similar to the file constant however um, say we include the init file in this sign up page like we will in a moment I'll demonstrate that soon um, and we use the server file script name variable um, that will point to this sign up page whereas the fi uh, well in this file it'll still point to the sign up page whereas the file constant in this file will point to this file not the sign up page I could just demonstrate that by doing um, echo file and then if I in the sign up page as we will anyway need to need to anyway include whoops the init file which is in the core folder slash init dot inc dot php like so and then if I go back to our page and hit reload you see we get this full path to the init file whereas in if I go back to the init file now and change this to I think it's server script name might be that might have to investigate yeah you see now we get the oh okay well that's just this bit uh, it must be the other one sorry about this never don't really use these very much so I usually have to look them up and I haven't okay well there you go you get the path to the sign up file not the um, actual file so that's why we use the file constant like that. Anyway, what we need to do now is use that path. Oh, actually, I could just demonstrate as well. If we echo path, this will just be the folder part. So, full path of the core folder. So, what we want to do is include this slash whatever. So, what we're going to do is go back to here and we are going to include. First, we're going to spell include right. Uh, like that. We're going to include variable path slash inc slash mail dot inc dot php and if you remember that's basically this file here so we can test that by in well we can test that by relo reloading the page don't get any errors that means the file's been included it also means that we've connected to the database successfully as otherwise we're getting mysql connect warnings so what we are, what we need to do after we've set up this init file is include it in all the pages so that we connect the database on all the pages. So we're going to copy this include string and paste it here and here, like so. Um, yeah, so that's that pretty much done. The next file that we're going to be working with is the backend file. Um, in this part, I will probably not get much further than just defining the functions, but it's a useful thing to do anyway. So. Uh, the three functions we're going to be creating here are add user, remove user, and mail all. 
the add user uh, is the one we're going to be using first. That's basically the sign up page. Um, remove user is basically the unsubscribe page, and mail all is basically the send mail page. So what we're going to do, what we are going to do, is add the functions, so function definitions. So we're going to do function add user. Then it's going to take three parameters. Oops, first name, last name, and email. This is the inf this is basically the columns we had in our table that are variable. So it's basically everything except the ID. And then in here we're going to do some things. So let's just comment this. What does this function do? It um, adds um, the given information to the table. Okay, so that's that function defined. Uh, let's now define the remove user function. For some reason I didn't type anything. Function remove user. Um, this will only take the email address because that's what we're going to be comparing to the database. Um, removes the given email address from the table. Formra from. No, that says form from. Okay, so that's that function defined. Um, and finally, we're just going to do one to mail all, which I will describe a little bit more um, later on. Uh, mail all. This is going to take three parameters the subject of message we want to send, the actual message body, and then some headers, which I'll talk about briefly later on. Oops. So this uh, sends the given message to all users. Users. Given message. There we go. Um, basically, PHP has a mail function. It's just mail. M mail. It's just mail, like so. What that function does is sends an email to the given address with the given subject and the given body. So this function, the mail function, takes four parameters. The subject, no, sorry, the email address you want to send it to, so two, then the subject, then the body, then some headers, additional headers. Um, obviously you won't be using this because we haven't, so just sort of like trying to explain here. Um, two is fairly obvious, so is subject and body, but headers might not be. Um, email addresses, emails, sorry, always have headers, just like any HTTP request. Um, they set things like who the email's from, who the email uh, should be replied to, the reply to header. So when you click, click reply, you just basically start up a new message to the reply to headers value. Um, and we need to specify the from header, which is why I've included this headers parameter. So what this mail all function will do is basically act as a wrapper around this mail function. So we're going to get all the user from the database, and then loop over that result um, mailing to each user basically without this first parameter because that will come from the database. So that's what we're going to be doing here. Um, I'll mention something about efficiency of this later on um, but I won't be showing you, well I'll talk about that in more detail later. Okay so that's where we're going to leave this part. Um, we've created the backend file function definitions, uh, the database and the init file and gone over the file structure slightly. Okay, so thanks for watching and join me in a part two where we'll sort of continue.